Welcome to Stefania's Exotical Adventures. Start off here with the star of the show, Steve. And his buddy Jeff. Eh. Very curious little monitor. I love him to bits. Hey buddy. More about his cage. This was an old piano that I actually uh, gutted. Uh, you can see there's the, where the keyboard was. <sighs> Soundboard back there. This is an old piano. It wasn't in good repair. It needed a lot of work. Um, it would have been way too much money to make it a usable piano, so I decided just to turn it into an enclosure for my buddy Steve here. This was a lot of work. I have a lot of footage on how I made it. One day I'll get around to editing all together into an entertaining video. But yeah, this is Steve the Red Aki. He's still grown, but he's, uh, I've had him about eight months, roughly. He's grown immensely since then. He was about six inches. Hey, buddy. Saying hi to the camera. And then down here, we have his buddy, Jeff. There's a reason why Jeff is in a much smaller enclosure. There's a reason why Jeff is by himself. I'm not going to get into it too much, long, long and short of his. I thought Steve was Stefania, <laughs> but turns out Stefania was really a, a male. So you can't house two males together, and Jeff is proof of that. He was bullied and injured on while I was at work, and by the time I noticed, it was really had some damage done but I have them in this small enclosure one because you know I wasn't expecting to separate them and two this is temporary um, I'm either looking to rehome him or just get him a better location but he's also not that active anyways he's he's not nearly like Steve um, yeah I have him on UV with heat it gets hot enough right there for him to do his thing. He's not quite as personable as Steve is, but he's he's a good boy. Isn't that right? We've been we've been bonding because I'm having to soak him almost every day because he was in bad shed from all the stress. But we'll get him there. He's a good boy. All right. All right, so here we are in the gecko room. It is, for all intents and purposes, a mess. I am still working on it. That's what this whole channel is gonna be about. Growth. You're gonna to get to see the whole process of me turning this room from what it is into hopefully what it's gonna be is something awesome, but we'll see. Maybe you can help along the way. Anyways, uh, just a quick overview. This is gonna be a short video. Um, I've got, I don't know if they count off the hand, but I know I have a bunch of geckos, a couple snakes, and uh, just a couple of random oddities. I like to keep it fresh. Here I've got uh, two gargoyle geckos, two crested geckos I'm raising up. They are ready to go into their adult homes. I got them when they were a lot smaller. And uh, yeah, they're just ready for an upgrade. This one's Phoenix. She is hiding somewhere. I don't want to bug her. Maybe she's that lump right there. Uh, this one is Floop. He is... Oh, oh no. This one's Floop. This one's Phoenix. I, I apologize. I fed him the other day. <laughs> and I forgot. Hello. 
random anole. I have this issue where my anoles are escaping out of this tank, but I'll get into that in a second. <sighs> Anyways. There's Phoenix, she's adorable. This is the meat of my pets, so it's just a room overview. And then this is Getsuga, because he likes to cork bark, and this is uh, Ryoka. So, naming schemes. I want to do like the plainest names for my, uh, for my crested gecko males, and stripper names for my crested gecko females. I don't know what Floop is, so I just kind of went weird with that one. Floop was my first crested gecko. Um, and then for all my gargoyles, I'm going with bleach names from the anime. So Getsuga, obviously, from Getsuga Tensho. And then Ryoka. If you watch the anime, you'll get it. If not, they're just cool names. All right, this is an anol tank. <laughs> this has a story behind it as well. It's a little dirty right now. I basically threw this together pretty quick. It's, I think it's full bioactive. Yeah, it should be full bioactive. I threw a bunch of mealworms and junk in there, so stuff pops up every once in a while. I have anywhere between four and six and all. I lose track to keep escaping because I put this fountain in there and it jacked up the corner of the lid over there. And try as I might, I just can't get that lid to stay down so that they uh, don't escape. But I catch them and put them back in, so it's all good. I bought all these anoles as feeders for someone you'll see in a little bit. And yeah, they were too big. So, yeah, I'm just keeping them now. <laughs> so frustrating. I ordered geckos and I got anoles that are way too big. Moving on. This 29, this 20 gallon right here houses my dwarf BCI Cortez. You kind of see him right there. Pardon the lighting in this room, it's really bad. Um, Dwarf BCI Cortez. Ow! He is from the Terra Humera region. They do not get big at all, from what I've heard, what I was told, what I've researched. Um, they're, they're not going to get to the, uh, you know, seven, eight foot size of the uh, typical BCIs. Terra Humera mountain range is going to limit their growth to around four or five foot. This is a male, so they'll probably stay around the four foot range. Which is perfect, because I like things small. I don't really have, technically I have room for a big cage, but I don't feel like getting into that right now. I want to keep it small. Keep it small, keep it small, Marco. That brings me to my first snake. This teeny tiny critter keeper right here houses a snake that I call, I've come to call, Lil Snack. If I can find him, I will show him to you. But he is a Solomon Island ground boa. One of the, if not the smallest species of boa. Even smaller than, ooh, that's not good. Even smaller than the uh, sand boas. I hope he didn't escape. I just realized that the top was kind of kind of cracked. It's usually in here. I'm having to do this one-handed. Little snack. Where are you at, buddy? Mmm, so that's not good. It looks like he escaped. Oof, I gotta find him. Ah, oh, Christ. I'm gonna have to cut this part out. <laughs> so, I seem to have lost the Solomon Island ground boa known as a little snack. He was in here. I just tore the whole cage apart. Um, evidently when I went to put water or do whatever I was doing last time, this was either cracked or maybe he pushed it up himself, but long, long and short of it is he's not in there and this was open. This was a jar, as you see, so. I will be looking out for him. <laughs> in the room. I don't, I don't think he's lost yet. I just fed him, so he should have some energy. But this is just amusing, because I was just telling my so, some friends, I'm like, he never moves. He's literally in the same spot. He's literally, he was in that same corner over there for three days straight, and I don't think he moved once, because it he was literally in the same spot, in the same pose, so. Yeah, that's, uh, that's disheartening. I like Little Snack. It's going to be hard to find him, too, because he's 
like not even kidding he's five inches long and he's 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 tiny he's li he's a sm about as small as you can get he's almost a hatchling um if and when i get him back i don't i, I have faith I'll, have, I'll find him back i found other things lost in my room but anyways that that really it really gets my goat anyways we'll move along i'll, I'll more to my own time um yes cortez little snacks house hopefully we'll find him anoles i had a fountain in there in there i let it go dry once and it uh died so now it's just a nice little rock crevasse have a handful of little theater anoles i got and look at all that water from where i missed isn't it magnificent uh I don't know why the camera doesn't want to focus properly though. But there's a couple in the corner over over there. Anyways, yeah, they get out. Um, let's move further down this rack. Down here, these aren't mine. These are two baby uh, hog noses that a friend of mine bought. Him and his wife are looking to getting into breeding them. So they got these two little hoggies and they're of course nowhere to be found. <laughs> But on this side we have Nudge, on this side we have Penny. Penny is uh, albino and possibly head snow. And Nudge is just a good old normal. Oh, I think I see him in the back. There's Nudge being good old, a good little Nudge. There. Nudgy poo. They've been on hunger strike for a while, so. Hopefully they start eating again. If not, we'll have to get some scenting stuff. It's going to be hard to do this room tour without having an eye out for my uh, long lost uh, little snack. Alright, moving on. This is the main gecko shelf. It's a bit of a mess right now. It's really dark right now. Uh, I've got some lighting upgrades planned for the shelves. And uh, I got some more upgrades to do. We'll start at the bottom. All right, so here we have two 29s, 29 gallons that I. Uh, let me sit. I got two 29 gallons that I converted myself into you know, vertical vivariums. Plenty of space. I had planned to put as many as three females in there, but we'll see how uh, well they use their space. Some are more lace than the others. So in here, we have, let's see if this is gonna do it right. Here we have Lola. She is a Halloween pinstripe Dalmatian creation that I got from Tiki's Geckos uh, about a month and a half back. She's a little spitfire. I'm not gonna bother her because it's still kind of daytime, but uh, yeah, I just tried to use the space as best as possible. I got a little reptile hammock in there. I've got a bunch of giant sticks in there. Got the ledge, some live plants, everything I try to, I try to do everything bioactive um, best I can, especially with these geckos, because it helps keep the smell down. There's a better look at it. I don't want to bug her too much. She's a little frog, but she actually just laid me some eggs straight from Tiki's geckos, so that's exciting. Yeah, plenty of space to hide. I mean, half the time I can't even find my geckos when I put them in here, so I'd say it works well. And I got them on sale. They were a dollar per gallon, so I got these 29s for 30 bucks, <laughs> roughly. Can't beat that with a stick. Moving on. And here I have Dave and Becky. These are Altitude Exotics. Uh, geckos. I won't pull them out because this is just an overview, but I got a little lay box. I got a spray. I had a tree in here and it died, so I've got to replant this one almost completely because like everything in here is dying. Uh, these are all my these are my first uh, planted bio bioactives, so you know failures to be expected. But there you can see Dave just chilling right there, and then Becky's just hanging out. She's like a half frog, but she's missing part of her tail. I'm guessing she's a tail nip from when she was younger. Becky's my big girl. There she is. 
she is cute. Focus. Here we go. Yeah. We'll do a meet my pets sometime. This is just trying. I'm trying to get this out quick because I'm sick and tired of not sharing my life on YouTube. Plus, I'm going through these upgrades rather quickly, quicker than I expected myself to, which I'm it's a good thing. I'm proud of myself, but you know, I want to document the process of, of growth. I think that's more fascinating to me than I think that would be more fascinating than you know, say the finished product. And this is it. Look what I did. Plus, I can get input from you guys. All right. So this is my. Oh, I'm sorry. This is my first attempt at a uh, conversion. Oof, this isn't doing so hot. This is Raiden the lychee. I got him as a 10-day-old, and he's now a handful of months. I got him in October. This is January, so you math for me. Ah, this one again. I used the uh, I used acrylic instead of wood because that's what I was following the I was following the instructions more exactly. Acrylic is better, but I use the epoxy instead of silicone and I'm having the same thing where the epoxy is brittle and it just, it just popped out. Um, if I were to do this again with the acrylic, I would do, instead of the front, I would put it behind the lip so I'd have the uh, structural integrity of the lip. I'm not sure we're right out there. He's in a tree. I don't want to bug him too much, but there's a ride in the lychee. Light. I'm using my cell phone as lighting. That's how Jerry rigged this is. There's Raiden. I don't know if it's his tail or face. I think it's his tail. His face is over there. But he's growing. He's nice. He's a good boy. This is just a 10 gallon. This I'm gonna step Raiden up. He's actually right next to his adult cage that I just built the other day. That's my first like advanced custom setup. We'll do a tour of that later, though. But, uh, yeah, that's not one to hold on, is it? I'll have to figure that out better. Anyways, this is Raiden's uh, adult enclosure. It's a 29 as well. I like the 29s. They kind of fit nicely. Um, a lot of space. I used uh, different materials for the blocking, and I put it behind, like I said. It worked out really well. It was super easy, and I will do a tutorial on how to do that when I redo these cages. And I actually gotta make one more like this for these because I have plans. But uh, lots of signs of area. Put some floating islands up there with some planters. Some, uh, I think it's Ficus pumula. And some random plants in the bottom. I think it'd be nice. Oh yeah, cork bark, lots of cork tubes. All right, moving right along. These are 29 gallons as well. But I put a divider right down the center. So now we have, I call these uh, my split 29s. Um, I intend these to house an adult. Um, as I have right now, I have Carlton in here. Carlton is a male. He's like a dark buckskin. He's really cool. Dark buckskin, but he's got cool, he's got little Dalmatian spots, and he's got really nice portholes, like really bright. He's just a really wild looking gecko. He's a good boy. And over here I have another one that's planted, the the uh, bromelia died on me. <laughs> but whatever plant this is, it does amazingly well wherever I put it. And pardon the glare, it's just, you know, that's a little better. But whatever plant that is here, it does amazingly well because when I planted it, this entire shoot here, as you can see, is like touching the ceiling. That's new growth from like a month ago. I mean, it, it didn't even take that long for it to grow. It, it probably grew in a week. So, kudos to that plant. If you guys know what it is, comment below and let the world know what it is. And lots of dying plants because I don't have any lights on here. But I'm gonna fix that. Um, same thing over here. This is gonna actually get, uh, once I finish planting this side, this is gonna get my two gargoyles and I'm gotta upgrade. And then I got another cage for my two uh, crested so I'm gonna upgrade. Moving right along, we have my feeder stack. Just a bunch of bins with insects. 
it's not really well done right now, so I'm not gonna take you through them. Plus they're bugs, you know what these are. And here we have, this is my morning gecko colony. I love these guys to death. I'm a big morning gecko fan. Um, this is a 10 gallon. I just put a lid on it with an access so I can get to it. And I put a bunch of silicone around the edges because I like to hide up there and I was afraid of taking it off for them escaping, yada, yada, yada. But this works well. Um, bioactive again. Lots of plants. Plants are doing okay. They love this plant here. I think it's a variegated croton or something. Yada, yada. I'm not good with plants. But if you do know, if you are good with plants, let me know in the comments below. Uh, probably not going to see them because they're nocturnal. But they're adorable little things. I can't wait till they start breeding for me. This pitiful little cage is my next work in progress. This houses Coco, my African fat tail. She, I got her full grown from a reptile um, store. They had uh, gotten her in on consignment. She wasn't in the greatest health, but she's still a little better now. Um, yeah, I'll pull her out. She's pretty unoffensive. She doesn't look like she's in her humid hot high, so she's probably down here in her... Yep, there she is. Hey, girl. Yeah, she's just a striped African fat tail. She's adorable. I love her to bits. I don't play with her enough, though. As I try to put this hide down without pressuring her. She's kind of picky, so I just have a dish there of all sorts of buggies. Uh, I went to Josh's Frogs and I ordered a African fat tail cocktail thing, and yeah, it's just basically a little bit of everything. And I put a little bit of everything in that cup, <laughs> hoping she's eating some of it. And here is my most oddball species, if I can get to it. Pardon the seasick inducing camera work. Here is my Matoa Toa Breve Peas. Peter and Gwen. I can guarantee you will not see them. I'll try to edit in some footage that I've had on the literal three times I've seen them since I've had them. And that's including when I first put them in. They are super secretive. The only reason I know they're alive is because I keep finding poop in various places around the, the cage. They're finding information on these guys is super hard. Um, I got it from a breeder in, I think it was in Maryland or, yeah, I think it was Maryland. Anyways, got it from a breeder in Maryland. Uh, specializes in little geckos and such and geckos and oddball stuff. He's a biologist, I think. But anyways, so I, most of this is just suggestions from him. Lots of cork bark. Uh, they feed on insects and the CGD, which I just refresh and I hope they're eating it. Again, I've literally seen these three times, and I think it was only the same one. The only reason why I knew they were alive after the first month is I found an egg, <laughs> because it's a mating pair. But anyways... That is that. I think the egg was a slug, so I don't expect baby to come out of it, but I'm incubating it anyways. But, yeah, so this is Peter and Gwen. Uh, Matoa Toa Brefapi's common name, if you want to quote unquote that, is Madagascar Salamander Gecko. I think it fits though, because they look like a salamander gecko. <laughs> it's long and skinny and gray and just freaking adorable. Alright, so next up we have. Actually, I think it's the last up. Yeah, last up we have my geckos in quarantine. I got this guy at Repticon. I don't want to bug him too much. But I got this guy at Repticon uh, a couple of weeks back. This is a gargoyle gecko. He's adult. Uh, I got to take him to the vet because he's got a little spine squiggle. I don't know if that's genetic or not, so I may or may not breed him. But he's a good boy. He's eating. He's pooping. He isn't, he's not dying on me, so that's that's all I can hope for. And this is another gargoyle gecko in quarantine. Um, this is Biakia. Oh yeah, sorry. So this is a uh, this is Renji, and this is Biakia. Uh, let's see if I can find him. He was down there earlier. Eh. We're probably not gonna get.
get a big, big picture of him. Yeah, I don't want to bug him since it's not quite dark. And that's all my uh, a brief overview of all my animals in my gecko room and my my personal room, actually. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, whole point of this channel is going to document the growth of this room, this endeavor I've got to breed geckos, to breed ackies, to do all these cool things, and learn the most, most I can about the husbandry of these guys, and, uh, you know, really just provide the best I can for not only them, but give back to the community that I've learned so much from. There's a lot of really, really quality creators on YouTube. I just want to, I just want to be part of the crew, you know. I don't know anything, I don't know everything, I don't know anything. But I'm gonna learn, and I think that uh, some of the things I've done, I can, you know, I want to document and give back to the community. Just so. Let me excuse me as I shove this off of him. Oh, Steve. Steve. He wants to get back in his cage. <laughs> eh. But um, yeah. So I'm gonna give back the best I can. I'm gonna share my adorable animals with you guys. Feel free to tune in and uh, see what else I've got. I got, like I said, a lot of upgrades planned, and you know, I never know what's going to come up out of, out of my head. So now you can't go through the glass, Steve. You can't go through the glass. <laughs> um, it's a feisty one. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my little tour. Um, I do plan on doing a video on each individual. At least each individual species I have, I might do, break it up, all my geckos, all my snakes, um, and, you know, all my ackies. Um, I do plan to breed Steve and maybe Jeff if I decide to come. I'm probably just going to keep Jeff. Steve and Jeff. Um, I'll document that process, you know. And this is, this is more for me than it is for really anybody else because I know I don't know a lot. And I don't really know a whole lot of people who do know a lot about these things, so this way I can extend my friend base. You know, I'm also, you know, I, I frequent different forums and I'm doing constantly doing research and figuring stuff out and tweaking. I believe in growth. I believe in growth, understanding, knowledge, all that good stuff. And I also believe in experimenting. And I lost. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to put him back now. <laughs> uh, like, comment, and subscribe, my friends. Ciao.